Okay, hello, this is Rob Trahan uh, from HiPi, and uh, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, an aspect of pandas that I've been fiddling around with, which I think is amazing. Uh, someone actually asked me the other day, um, what were the advantages of using uh, pandas and Python over um, an Excel spreadsheet when you're working with tabulated data? And um, this is an excellent, uh, this is the answer I should have given them. Uh, it's the ability to, um, you know, with a few lines of code, strip data directly from the web without cutting and pasting and, and start to manipulate it and plot it. So let me show you a really great example. Um, let's import our pandas as PD. Uh, I'm also going to import matplotlib uh, as PLT. And I have been uh, browsing the Intima web and good old Wikipedia. Um, I found this page of world population estimates and you can see all these wonderful tables here. Uh, you've got historical uh, data before the war for population. Uh, this is global population and then uh, post-war to present. Um, and it's also got um, projections from the likes of the UN and uh, the US Census Bureau as well. This is, this is good data. This is lovely data. Look at that. All the way up to... 2100 wow okay so how can i manipulate that data without cutting and pasting it and put it into a spreadsheet um so let me show you uh that's what i was working on that's cheating uh okay uh so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get that url so let's go to here let's copy that and put it here okay oh make sure it's in make sure it's a string Okay, now I'm going to use this um, magic uh, pandas function to create um, a list of data frames from that web page. So let's call it uh, data is equal to pd uh, read html. Uh, and I'm going to call, uh, put my URL in there. And I'm also going to use this one header equals zero. And what that'll do, it'll just make sure that, uh, let me show you, that the headers in each of these tables, um, we actually use them um, and make them headers of any data frames later on, okay? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do that. And if I show you what this data looks like now, it's a big list of data frames, pandas data frames. Um, and you can see that it contains each one of those tables which are on that website. So that single function has stripped out all of the really useful data from that website. Um, so now what? Okay, well actually I'm only really interested in um, the post-war data to begin with. So let's create a new data frame. Um, or let's create a data frame just for the post-war data. I think it was the, the third table in that list of data. Uh, so I'm just going to do um, df2. Uh, and if I take a look at my right, postwar.heads, there you go. Okay, so it hasn't used that header row. Why not? Let me just check something here. Should have done header equals zero. I've done there. There you go. Right, put the wrong thing in. Um, so now I've got this lovely table um, just with the post war data. Okay, so the best thing about pandas is I can now plot that immediately. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, if I just go post war dot plot. Oh, and I gotta do plot show, remember? PLT dot show. There you go, I've got the data. Okay, so this isn't terribly useful. I should have just done that once again, actually. Um, so it's done it, but I can't see much because my legend's in the way. So let's do it properly. Um, let's use matplotlib and create a figure environment. Figure x uh, equals plot subplots. And I'm gonna make the figure a bit bigger. Uh, let's call it, let's do 10, 10. Oh, a nice square image. And then I'm actually gonna set that here like that uh, okay i've missed brackets out there 
And I missed the other one at the end. Very slapdash today. There you go. So that's a bit better. Uh, and you can see I've got these tri these lines now. Uh, the problem here is I've got a line at the bottom because what it's done is it's looked at this data table and it said, okay, here are your X values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see it doesn't say you at the bottom. It's all those values. And then it's taken everything else to be Y values, including the year. So I don't want to plot the year as a Y value. I want that to be my X axis. How do I do that? Um, so let me just try and remember here. Oh yeah, okay, so post-war, let's go back up here. If I go, if I go here, and let's do post-war equals post-war dot set index. Um, year, and actually capital Y for year. Let's have a look. And there you go. I've now got the year as the index. If I plot this, if I run this again, I've now got that graph with just the data. Okay. Um, and actually, it's already put in a label there for me on the Y axis. Let's not forget to label our, sorry, our X axis. Let's not forget to label our Y axis. Uh, let's do axe.set Y label, uh, call it global uh, population. Okay. Fantastic. So I've done that. I'm not done yet, right? Wouldn't it be nice if, in addition to these lines, I could also get some of the data for the projected population into the future in there? Okay, so how do I do that? Well, um, the table immediately after, let's have a look at it, the, um, the post-war data is a set of projection data. So what I'd like to do is create a new data frame just for that table and then add that to the graph. Uh, let's do that. So here I'm going to add, actually I'm just going to use this line. I'm going to go projected equals uh, data, this is the next table. Actually I'm just going to do all this in one line. I'm going to set that index as the year again. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is, now I've got that data, I'm going to just do another line. I'm going to do uh, projected, oh, plot. Again, x equals x, and I'm going to do line style equals uh, dashed. And I'm going to bump up the line width as well to 7. And I'm going to run that. And there you go. So I've now got all of my post-war data to present, and I've got a projection here. So that one there is the United States Center. And what, what's a bit annoying here is because I bumped up that um, line width. Let's go to let's go to first. Let's, let's be real here. Come on. Okay, so it doesn't really show the dotted line, but there's shorter lines in the key there. So I, I know that that line is my United States Census Bureau and this line is the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Okay, so there you go. I've got a nice graph just from that data. So I hope that was useful and I hope it answers the question, uh, why is pandas and Python more useful than Excel? One last special trick, if you are determined to use Excel to plot your graph, um, then this is something you will like. Uh, let's now save all of our data as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so those two data frames are currently separate. I can combine them both. Uh, let's call, let's, let's create a new data frame called all data. Equal, I'm going to use the concatenate um, method in pandas, which is pd.concat. And I can, I'm going to combine those two data frames, which were post-war and projected. And the other thing I need to make sure I do is put axis equals to one. So that makes it add them as a column, not as a row. Uh, and then I'm going to do that. And I can see here now, if I do, if I just look at all the data, I've got, oh, hold on, all of that data there. And I've got those extra rows um, for the projected data as well, which I can see comes down here. Look, yeah, I've got values in there. Um, so I can now save that 
to an Excel spreadsheet by just going dot to Excel. I'll call it a global population data dot XLSX. There you go. And now if I look in my folder, there it is. I can actually open that up. Let's have a look at it. Ta-da! And you can do what you want with that then. But why would you if you've got pandas? Okay. Right, that's it for me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, for more resources, go to www.hypi.uk. And I will see you next time. Cheerio.